Okay. Uh, let's see. 433. Uh, I have a meeting. Call the meeting to order. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> have a good night. Bye. Sorry. And can I just get Dave's name for the record? Dave. What's your last name? Arnold. Okay. Thank you. I'm the clerk, so thank you. You're welcome. Oh, we should do formal introductions. Dave, I'm April West. I, I was uh, duly appointed chair of this lovely board of assessors committee. Um, <laughs> And Janet is um, currently our clerk, um, whose role will uh, need to be filled when we um, lose Janet and gain you. And welcome. And you know Darcy. Have you met Martha before? I have met Martha before. Okay. Hey, Dave. Hi, Martha. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good. I am totally took out my papers and I'm getting some signatures now. Yes. That's Great. exciting. I'm excited. So, if yeah, you need any help, let us let me know because I'm yeah. happy to. I left mine in the driveway and people came by and signed for the housing authority. So, okay, awesome. Thanks. I think we're good. We need two more signatures. Okay, good. 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 Oh, I thank you, though, for the offer. Yeah. Yeah, April, if you want to swing by or whatever. Okay, I could do that. Yep. I must be chopped liver now. No, 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 you're welcome to swing by the salon too, but April ne always needs to drop stuff to me for work, so. <laughs> I know, I, 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 yeah, anyways, yeah. So you've got a good location, I see, so. Yeah, it good. is a very <laughs> handy location, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I don't see that we have Chris tonight, and um, I don't see any public attendees. Other than Dave. Other than me. Dave, yes. Other than Dave. Okay. Uh, Dave, I call you a BOA in training. So, um, all right. On to um, minutes. Just the one thing I didn't get to today. Um, thank you, as always, Janet, for getting our minutes out. It's not too far in advance, but. Um, may I have a motion on the February 23rd um, regular Board of Assessor meeting minutes? I make a motion to accept the February 23rd regular Board of Assessor meeting minutes. I'll second. Okay, do we have any corrections? This included, um, did we jump into the joint meeting on this? No, that's on the 25th. That's a, um, okay. I thought we had the joint meeting with the finance committee on the 23rd. No, I thought that was the week before. Oh, the no, they were the same week. But it was the 22nd, and we approved those minutes on the 23rd. Okay. Thank you. I must not have, I must not have sent Chris the link or something. I don't know. She said so she's looking for the link. Sorry. Are, are, are you doing that, or do you want me to? I, I can just forward it real quick, what I sent out the other day, sure. if I can find it. I have it up. Do you want me to forward it? I got it. I'll, I'll come to it. Okay. Hey, Chris. I'm here. Oh, she's, never mind. We're fighting over who's going to send you the link. Chris, so. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Chris, we have Dave Arnold as our trainee um, joining us today. Hi, Dave. <laughs> How are you, Chris? Good, just fine. So I was I was searching for an email, and I guess I was searching in the wrong place. 
Yeah, I sent it to my town gov or uh, to uh, town of Southampton. Your town of Southampton one. So does it come from you though, or a board of assessors? It comes from me. Okay. Because I don't trust the board of assessors <laughs> to get, yeah, yeah, not get got, scammed. So they got lost somewhere. But anyway, okay. sorry. I'm sorry, April. Did we have a motion and I missed it? We had a motion and a second. Right, and the and, final. Uh, yeah, I. Any corrections or anything now that Chris is here? On, uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Don't wait on me. <laughs> Such a reputation she has. <laughs> All those in favor, West Eye. Gain Eye. Yes, Brainy Eye. Okay, thank you. On to the next. The joint um, PPPB meeting. May I have a motion on those? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the 25th joint meeting with PPPB. Second from Janet Kane. <laughs> Um, any corrections or additions or anything? All those in favor? West Eye. Dean Eye. Gasparini Eye. Okay. Thank you. Um, Martha, what wonderful information and needs do you have? Um, so the ATV um, for Mr. Gwinner, um, we had a date of March 18th, but he called me um, that he would really rather meet with the board to discuss his property at 11 Golden. Um, and so they gave options, the ATB. It could be telephonic, video conferencing, or submission of the case on a documentary evidence and written statements. Um, so he called me first to tell me what he wanted. So I then confirmed with the ATB clerk um, that I think we would be fine. So we're just gonna put it off until we can meet in person. Okay. Um, Mr. Gwinner is fine with that. I assumed the board would be fine with that. We don't know when that will be. He doesn't know when that will be. The ATB doesn't know when they will be opening up for meetings. They're thinking maybe not even until 2022. Um, so this will just sit in my file and we'll just wait and see. Um, so it was scheduled for March 18th? Is that it what was. So this came, but it wasn't for us to really act on. It was up to Mr. Gwinner to decide how he wanted the meeting. Uh, that's my understanding because it comes addressed to him and he needs to show evidence as to why he feels he's over assessed and it's just based on his land, but he has an improved piece of property. Um, so we only have a total value. We don't just have a land value. Um, so he's fine with just putting it on hold. They'll cancel the more March 18th and then reschedule. So if that comes up first before we decide we're gonna meet in public, it's really just up in the air at this point. Um, so that's okay. that. Now I sent this last um, minute. Did you get the um, email about the door hanging? I yes. did, yep. I just wanted you to see it because I'm going to send it off in an email to Paradise Copies. A um, hundred copies is thirteen seventy-five. I'm going to order two hundred, so this will go when I visit properties, when um, Alan visits properties. Oh, there it is. So just let me know what you think, um, and that's going to be like this. So half a page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great.
do um do we want to add um an email address on that it's the only thing that i oh yep let's see i will add that under um southampton mass up at the top uh you could put it in down below where it with the phone has number called the assessor's yeah. office yeah can be reached yes we can be reached at okay at email okay all right and then um if if you want me to pick up the order martha i can because i'm up in northampton almost every day oh sure yeah, right. so South Ham Southampton has an account, so they will just bill us on account. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So uh, you'll just make note. It says see reverse for additional notes, so that's where you'll put any comments. That's where there. if there's anything to be written, that okay. will go there. Great. Um, so I ordered um, Ed actually ordered it through his Amazon account, a battery charger. I know you guys are dying to know how that went. So it doesn't work. So I ordered a battery, um, just a generic battery for the camera. Um, sorry, I didn't say that was, this is for the camera. Um, yep. Um, so that should come in tomorrow. We'll see if the battery works um, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. So how much was the camera the last time you bought one? I remember it being like a couple hundred dollars. Uh, I think it was under two. Okay. So yeah. how, quickly, how quickly are you going to need to have camera access? Well, I mean, I, I always have my phone, so right. I'm taking pictures with my phone. Um, right. I was just at a house yesterday. Um, I think there's a couple houses coming up soon. I'm waiting for, I, I never know. It's whenever they're looking for COs and um, right. so it's my, my, my phone's fine for now, but I should hopefully know tomorrow um, if the battery works in the camera. Okay. So um, I guess what I would like the board to do is um shall we authorize martha to buy a new camera in between meetings should that be necessary with um just a quick email around for everybody i'd like to make a motion if i could that if the battery doesn't solve the issue to give martha the authority to spend up to two hundred dollars is that fair? I'd go like three hundred. Three hundred dollars. I'll amend my motion to spend up to three hundred dollars for a new camera. I second that. Okay. Okay. Um, Chris, you're muted. Oh. I know. I just realized that. Sorry. I was gonna say, yeah, you probably need close to three because you're gonna want the the um, the memory card and everything that goes in the camera, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times they come with that, and I can already use the one that I have here if it's compatible. Mm. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. yeah, so if it's compatible, to, yeah, up to 300 should cover it. Just be that would be plenty, I would think, for any accessories you might need to go with it. Yeah, yeah, right. okay, okay. So, Martha, if the battery doesn't work, just shoot us all a quick email and let us know that you're going to do that. Okay. Okay. All right, all those in favor of the, the motion on the table for up to 300 for new camera if needed? Aye. Hey, nice. West Eye? Gasparini Eye. Okay, cool. Okay, um, and I believe last at the moment is, so I'm taking the course 201 through the IAAO for appraisal of land. Um, I already have the course for my MAA, but I just really want to take um, um, like a refresher. So that course is this Thursday and Friday and next Thursday and Friday from eight to five with an hour for lunch. Now that goes into me going over my hours. Yeah. Um, so I don't really want to take a day off. I don't need to take a day off as far as, you know, um, having stuff to do. But um, so I need 
to know what you want me to do. Because if that's the case, I would have to take tomorrow off because this is the end of our pay period. Um, so I know that accounting, I will have money in the budget to transfer for any overage in my budget. Um, that's been done in the past. So of course I can't do it without your authorization to say okay to the extra hours. So it looks like it would be $441 over my regular pay. That would be this week and next week. So it would be $226.80 over in this pay period and 214 hours uh, $214.20 for next pay period. That's nine hours over my regular hours. Okay, and then the cost of the course, Martha. So that the cost of the course is $560. Okay. So we're closing in on $1,000. By quick math. Yeah, over by a dollar. Okay. All right. Um, so may I have a motion on that from the board? And I will say that after not including the hours, but after the five, uh, the next um, warrant, um, I have over $2,000 in my budget. Okay. So I'll make a motion to authorize Martha to take the course and um, increase her hours in for that purpose and that we will request an end of year transfer from one of the other budget lines um, in the June timeframe. Second that. Do we need any further discussion? Yeah, I guess the only thing I have is I know, um, April, you may need to speak to payroll because it things like that sometimes get bounced back okay. unless they understand right. what the plan is. So I guess right. I would recommend that you just share that this motion has been made and approved by the board to, okay. to payrolls. So Martha, I'll need uh, an email address a correct email address. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, Christy Facto or Jen Day. Okay. Okay. Um, so all those in favor of uh, Martha taking this class over the course of two weeks, Thursdays and Fridays beginning Thursday the 11th, this coming Thursday, and um, uh, proving the overtime necessary to do that. Yeah, it's the extra hours because it's not truly an overtime. Well, the extra hours, okay. Yeah. Well, it does bring me over 35 hours. 40 hours, over 40 hours is overtime. Okay. Legally, I believe. Okay, so it's the additional hours that are required to take the course. All those in favor, West Eye? Kane I. Gasparini I. Okay, great. And then Janet, maybe you can help me with making sure that we request the end of the year transfer. Yeah, I think when yeah. Okay. Yes, I'll be happy to assist. I think that typically someone will reach out when we're running out of money in June for okay. to pay Martha for the last week or something. And I think that um, they typically are pretty proactive, but yeah, we'll put it on the calendar. So we remember okay. to do that. All right. If I remember to remember. I will remember because I don't, I don't suspect they will remember. Okay. So, and that will be um, when, when are elections and when will David start with us? And I think around May 18th is the election. Okay. I may be off a day or two, Chris, do you know? 
<clears throat> Normally it would be May 4th, I believe. No, I think the town meeting is now moved up to early May. So, oh, that's right. Are they switched? That's right. They Sorry, it's, it's it? yeah. yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. Yep, yep. I was thinking town meeting. You're correct. Yeah. I hate when that happens, don't you? <laughs> it's just been one of those days. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, anything else, Martha? That is it. I just have, um, so I have the boat warrant. I have the bill for the next warrant. I have our February motor vehicle excise abatements, um, monthly real estate. So there are two properties that I visited. One is Three Friar Road. It is a rental. It's um, not really a valid or a legal house, I guess. It's just a shell at this point. They wanted to have it assessed as an outbuilding. Um, it really is just a shell. It has subfloor, it has no fixtures, it has no doors. So um, I just went ahead and I have everything ready. If you agree, you can sign. Um, so it was originally assessed as. Um, so the owner requested you to assess, Martha, is that what happened? Yeah, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with the out on um, County and Friar, there's actually two parcels that really should be one. And the property line goes right through the house that was seeking the abatement. Um, they are supposed to be joined, but they are not. Um, I have two separate deeds for each um, and two separate property descriptions. So I don't want to just join them until a new deed is recorded that at least shows both property descriptions, but you can't build on that three Friar Road. So they originally were assessed at um, $107,500. And then after seeing the house, it's in very poor condition. Like I said, it has no nothing inside. No walls, uh, subfloor, no fixtures. Um, lowered the assessment to eighty thousand, with a abated tax amount of four hundred thirty nine thousand eighteen hundred. So there's that to be approved and signed. Um, and then a property at. 42 Cottage Ave that I visited. Unfortunately, he's not able to see visitors, but we had a um, nice long conversation on his patio. Um, he is on the water and I did adjust his value. He was not being assessed as others on Cottage who have waterfront. Um, so he had an assessment of $295,100. Um, it's a rough area, I will say. I don't know if you've, um, my two realtors have been out there. It's really kind of rough. I mean, his house is nice, but he was assessed at an average plus 10. Um, I played with the figures. I would say justifiably an average. Um, it's really just a, like a 23 by 32 box. Um, it has a deck, um, carpet. So once it was not being assessed for the front porch, which is just like a three by four and the deck. Um, but I know that there was a sale at 46 Cottage, which is definitely an older home, but that also is waterfront and that sold for 235,000. So making those changes to 42 Cottage brought the assessment to 279, which I think is pretty fair for that area. Um, once they start fixing up the house on 
cottage, um, the 46 cottage, then we'll have a little more um, idea of how that neighborhood, but it's, you know, it's, it's a tough neighborhood. You have people right on top of each other. So a neighborhood to watch, because there's another parcel that they're building, not on the water. So that is for you to um, discuss, um, sign, and the certificate. Okay. Is the one for that sold for the 230, that's going to be torn down and a new house is being put up. Is that be, okay, yeah. So that'll change, you know, not yeah. so much for this one, but in the yeah. future. And this, right. this is a newer home. Um, it's not an, it was built in 2012. Oh, okay. So it's not an older home. Right. But. Is, the, I don't know. is that, I'm sorry, is that the road where the, um, the property had a fire? It's that, yeah, it's the same road off of Pequot, but then you take a left, it turns into a dirt road, yeah. and they're really close together. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then there's also a blind exemption to be signed that is a denial. Okay. Now, why was it a denial? Um, the gentleman is blind, but he does not own the property and he's not a trustee of the property. So unfortunately his um, spouse cannot claim the exemption for the property. Okay. Okay. Arthur, you give me a list of those so I don't miss any of them. Do you mind? Got it right here. Okay, thank you. Um, so if you want to decide, um, instead of me texting you first thing in the morning, when you want to come in and sign, um, I'll be here tomorrow and not Thursday. Right. Um, and do we also need to discuss and vote while we're here or... Do we have enough information to do that, or do we have to, for the, um, which one were you asking us how we, what we wanted to do for the properties? Is that something that we typically would vote on? A, yeah. I mean, do you have any, if, yeah, if you have any questions on the abatements on the property, um, I did look in the windows of the house on Cottage Street. I looked in the basement windows. Um, he has health issues, so I wasn't able to go in. But like I said, it's not like these new houses with all kinds of rooms and peaks and valleys. So it was pretty much just a, a box. Okay. All right. Um Three Friar Road, can you just, um, so you said that currently there are two deeds that are going to be joined together? So yeah, now that I, um, so there is a house on County Road that has a deed that um, this, it's Emerald, Emerald City Rentals LLC. Yep. And behind it is another deed to Three Friar, but the property line goes through Three Friar. So I don't know how that ever happened. Um, so my understanding is you either do a plan with the boundaries and then you can join the properties or and maybe there needs to be a plan. Um, and Dave, actually, maybe you have a, so if you want to join parcels, um, I was under the understanding that if you had a deed that had both property descriptions, you can then merge the parcels. Yeah, legally, I can't tell you if it's okay to merge them without, you know, technically having a, a lawyer involved and actually combining them. But for assessment purposes, you certainly can treat them as one um, because it really is one. The, the fair market value is technically one value. Right. So and, legally, yeah. 
that I'm not, you know, when I do our maps, um, usually I have a plan of land where they take two parcels and they merge them into one parcel or, you know, they take three parcels and combine them. So now there's one large parcel and a small parcel. Um, so, you know, and I've seen older properties that have merged in the past show up on deeds as, you know, lot one or parcel one and lot two or parcel two on one deed, which Hopefully, they're seeing a lawyer to have the deed drawn up. Um, it's not just some simple quick claim. But uh, yeah, the, legally, I, I guess that's something I need to find out. So, Fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. It, right. They all come in with plans. Um, at this point, I don't know what they're doing. I think if they sell it, they just they just continue to sell it as two parcels, but they can't build on that that three Friar Road. So, yeah, I think so, if you if for assessment purposes, you can do, you know, at the fair market value as a combined. But I don't know technically if you could. I don't believe you can legally separate them. Yeah. Oh, separate that? I'm mean, Join them. Join them, correct. So if they're two separate parcels, they have two separate values, correct? They are, so you just have to be careful if there's two separate parcels. Uh, sometimes someone will separate parcels and they both become unbuildable because of zoning laws and you don't right. want people to get away, not to get away with it, but to do things like that. But when right. you do combine them, the combination of two smaller parcels to a larger parcel doesn't equal the total of both but you can put the numbers in as they are as two parcels as mm -hmm. far as the putting them into the system for evaluation okay so in past towns i've seen where they do if it's the same owner and the parcel is continue you know is is abutting the main parcel that they've added them together for assessment purposes um i don't know you know if it's common to do that yeah i don't see it a whole lot um there was the parcel on strong road that they wanted to purchase their abutting parcel which has the barn on it so i had them draw up a deed they went to their lawyer because first they came in as two you know they bought their house a few years ago and then they wanted to buy this one so they thought that was enough and i said no um going hopefully not on completely wrong information that you need to have a deed drawn up that you are now the owner and this property which is your house is say lot one and then the adjoining property is lot two so now that property is your um, residual land it's now your house with an outbuilding and your your back land so they do benefit from a lower assessment because now it's not two buildable lots or one improved lot and a buildable lot so you know then once they decide if they want to sell it now they have to go through you know zoning and and they have to it's not just about saying calling me up and saying i'd like to split those parcels it's not that easy um this i think because the pond area is so tricky because what was a lot of camps back then um so i don't know how this parcel it can't be built on they can't have a septic system or no i'm not I don't know. Jerry was telling me about um, some issues with the parcel. So they really have been, it benefits um, the owner to have them as one. We have them as separate, two separate parcels, two separate assessments, two separate street addresses. Um, but I think they want to have this, treat this as an outbuilding because they can't sell it. They have to sell them together. So we're, we're, I guess I'm not sure what we're approving and we're approving for the yes, lower so this, yeah. Can the, I abate, the abatement of three Friar Road. So oh. I have one more comment. Um, I don't know, Darcy, if you've had um, any experience, but Emerald City is a flipping company. They buy, mm -hmm. they fix, they sell. 
So um, we want to pay particular attention to whatever decisions we're making because this property will come back on the market very soon. Um, that would be that was kind of my concern. Like, could that be grandfathered in right. this, the other lot? Um, because I know, you know, a lot of those, especially where the structure is still there from the other pro the other house that was there, would that be grandfathered in? And yeah. I don't know, you know, us okaying one way or the other, how that would affect that. Right. So I think um, if we're going to make a motion uh, to approve, I think what I'd like to have us do is on three Friar, uh, Martha, I think the board ought to take a drive and um, Darcy, especially Darcy and I do a little homework um, before we approve an abatement. I just want to be a little cautious and see the parcels and see what we're dealing with, you know, see the current tax records before we um, make any decisions on this one. So how does the rest of the board feel about that? Yeah, I was I was a little confused if we're joining the parcels after no, three no that was just back somebody asked me about the property okay. this is just about three friar road which is his own property it's just okay. a shell of a, a house with nothing in it they were assessed at what they thought was too high um they purchased the property in may of 2016 i don't think they've done a whole lot with the house um so I, yeah, I know they're just renting the property. Um, they could turn around and flip it and sell it, but they can't do anything with the house that they filed the abatement for because it's doesn't. It's not a legal. It's not a legal lot. It's not. Um, it's. I don't. I don't have all the details. Jerry would have more information on that. Okay. Um, but Is yeah. That I wrote By down me, to merge properties for deed and we're not doing that's that's not no, a cool that, no that was no okay just want to make sure okay, okay thank you I, I I agree I think we should postpone that and the you and Darcy take a look April I think that's a great yeah. idea. okay just so that we can even just get some more information on it right. To, right. to have yep. all right so um on 42 cottage uh, may I have a motion to um, uh, reduce the value on that based on, on Martha's recommendation from 295 to 279? I'll make a motion. A second. Okay, any further discussion on that one? All those in favor, West aye. Green aye. Yes, Brainy aye. And we table Three Friar Road until we uh, next meeting when we've done our research. Okay. All right. So um, I am available and around tomorrow to stop by and sign stuff. Um, Martha, what what time makes sense? You're all day. The only time I'm not available is from like 10 to 12. I have some, a plumber coming. Okay. Darcy, how was your um, day? I am a little crazy tomorrow, but I could probably break away about 1.30. All right. You guys want to say around 1.30? That sounds good with me. Okay. Yep. That looks good. I actually, I have a question on 8 Cold Spring Road. My two realtors, the M-shaped house. Do you yeah, have any yeah. information on that? Is that a, a short sale? Is that, um, it looks like there was a notice of action back in uh, 2018, but it hasn't been foreclosed. So the current listing says it is a short sale. It is a short sale? Yeah. Okay.
All right. Martha, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to just jump into old business. Um, Zoom meeting protocol, and I, I just want to apologize if I went um, off on a tangent in any of uh, the past meetings. Um, and am very well aware that we are live and recorded and people watch us. Um, and uh, next is comp hours um, and budget. So Martha, we just wanna make sure that um, you are clear on, I mean, we totally appreciate that you watch your hours so that you don't go over budget. But if you need to go over budget, then there's no reason that you, you know, you shouldn't be paid for those additional hours like the class coming up. Um, because that's the way that your pay is worked out right now. That may change if the PPPB board changes things a little bit. Um, but um, just, you know, we totally appreciate that you're staying within your budget, but if those hours are needed to be able to do your job and that's the way your pay scale is working, then, and our budget can handle it, then there's no reason why, why you shouldn't be able to work those additional hours on an occasional basis, yeah. But we, the, you know, I guess, my concern is that our budget can't handle it typically yeah. and it needs to be pre-approved by your board and made aware of it and we've got to find i mean if we need need to move this meeting earlier in the day so that martha doesn't have to work extra hours of you know in her day i mean we just it's it's payroll's not going to allow payment of extra hours outside the budget typically okay. okay so you know we have the budget the everybody on the select board always asks for us to stay within our budget Hello? Um, if we need to budget extra hours or uh -huh. move our meetings i mean I, i'm i'm a what little Zoom meeting Dick. <laughs> what was yeah that? so I, <laughs> any time any time that I might be over, you are pretty much aware. Town meeting, um, I didn't clock hours for PPPB, but I did for finance. Um, so there's really no hours I go over. If I stay until five because I happen to be getting into something that I don't want to leave, I'm just, you know, leaving an hour is the, that's kind of how I work things, but this is something that I wasn't going to take on myself. Um, right. You know, having working on a Friday and and I I have a board. I'm not going to make those decisions, but it's not it's not an issue. I just was never aware of you know the how and the why. You know how things changed, why things changed. I mean, this was before I was here, so. You know, I don't know how things are. I'm just working my hours. So, no, the board meetings don't have to change. Um, anytime I'm working in excess, you are aware of it because you're usually a part of it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely deferring to you my board more often for approvals. Um, we have new... Uh, um, accountant um so it just everything needs to be transparent and clear it's not due first ask second so i'm making sure that all of this is approved so when the questions come my board is aware so uh, there's no issues on my part i'm not looking to clock in more hours to get more pay um so there's really no issue for me it just you know it was um, finding out the history of how this began. So, can you be more specific, Martha? Because I don't have a clue what you're talking about. 
how what began? What? Well, the, the 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 fact that this became a clerical position. Oh, so oh, 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 oh. okay. Over time or whatever, get paid for hours over the hours allotted to work. Mm -hmm. You know that I, I just you know I am what I am, and I I work what I work, and I wasn't. You know, if I come in at eight fifteen. Um, it kind of is in the wash if I work until 5.30 or, or if I work until, you know, 5. Yeah, I might put in that extra hour or I might leave a half an hour the next day. That's, right. to me, that works, that benefits me. Um, right. When we're talking substantial hours and entire days, well, then that's something that wouldn't be um, unknown to you. Okay. All right, and we're, and we're all learning um, the history, the history on on the board of assessors because we're all new, we're all learning. So, so yeah. is can I, can I just ask a question, Martha? So, was the was there a comment made that you're not supposed to do comp hours? I guess I'm trying to understand what occurred and and make sure as your supervisors that we know sort of if we aired how we aired so that we don't air again. And um, why is it yeah. in all of a sudden? And <laughs> well, I guess um, I, because I, you know, saw the the documents that you gave us, and it was the two scorings: one for the COA and one for the assessor position. And the COA was over here, and the um, board of assessor or the assessor was a clerical a position. So I had asked, um, you know, I go and talk to Ron and Art in the. Um, building department and was just, you know, asked about that. And so it came up as to the same thing um, Mr. Palermo had said, that the history of why this was made the case. So that's um, that's how that came up. And and then I opened, you know, my big mouth and got dramatic and said that that's not legal. Well, I didn't mean legal. It's not a legal issue, but, um, you know, I just, um, yeah, it got a little dramatic, but I, I don't have all the technicalities. I haven't read the entire procedures manual. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 everything's it's fine. So that's how that happened to have come up because, you know, the clerical and why that was made a clerical position. OK, OK, good. So, I mean, I'm just, that makes sense. I thought there maybe was something more to it that I know the exempt versus non exempt. Yeah. Okay. Clerical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. OK. Yeah, I, I don't think I realized it was non exempt until. Right. We Until we started really it. learning about it. Yeah. Asking, yeah. Started asking questions. So. Right. And that's a great segue into the follow up for the PPPB meeting and the finance meeting. So we are invited to uh, join the um, PPPB meeting uh, at six o'clock on Thursday, this Thursday, the 11th. Um, I think what I would propose is should we join their meeting maybe at like 6.15 or 6.20? I'll get the link and confirm that with uh, Robin and Christy so that um, we have a time when we all come to the meeting, we take care of our business with the PPPB, and then we're, we're done. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be on earlier because the COA director's position is up first. Okay. I prefer like not to be at that meeting. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. I, I won't be able to be at that meeting. That's this Thursday. Correct. Yep. Yeah, I won't be able to be at that also. All right. So, Janet, you and I are up. So, why don't we just, I'll be there at six. And um, you don't, I mean, you can come in a little bit later because we are, they will score yeah. this, you know. Okay. I mean, it's more of a, I think, listen and understand than, right. than anything else. So I don't okay. see that as okay. being a sharing of information or us trying to influence. Well, no, I mean, we've already given our, our, yeah. all of our information. So it's waiting for their decision, their discussion and their decision. Yeah. There's a whole scoring process where they weigh different, well, you saw the, you know, you saw the yeah. um, sheet. So, okay. So, 
the finance um, committee, we will need to update them. And have we like missed the the window for the budget? Chris, do you know that? I don't think so. I know I'm not Chris, but okay. I, th I think there are still budget meetings taking place. Yeah, there's there's still a few more budget meetings. I think most of the, the big departments have gone through, um, mm -hmm. but I think uh, the school is still up and a couple of others. So I believe there's still time to get something corrected or turned around there. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. But April, you may want to ask for next week to get on at least by Wednesday of next week or Thursday or, or right. Monday, Tuesday, Monday or Wednesday, I guess they're going over okay. it. So if we can get on. Yeah. Whichever day works okay. for them. Yeah. Right. So if you can get on the agenda, so if they have you posted on the agenda in time, so yeah. sooner rather than later, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. All right, um, Martha, do we have any other follow up on any chapter 61 stuff? I have not heard from either of those two parcels. Okay. All right. Um, on that note, um, I would like to attend a planning board meeting, but I, I, I am still a little fuzzy on how the, the, the three parcels um, uh, and I, I'm going to have to say a name because I can't remember the name of the road, but um, Goulet's property, you know, when she parceled it up for 20 acres per kid. So she took 60 and parceled it up for three, three separate parcels of 20 acres each. So they still all comply with Chapter 61, uh, net, you know, whatever. Um, chapter 61 guidelines to be able to get the tax break. But um, now that that land has been divided up um, and that D, that survey has been recorded, will there be three separate tax bills on those parcels? Yes. Should be. And will each tax bill have like, will they all be considered viable building lots so they would be would they be taxed at whatever the zoning is say it's an acre um at fair market value and then excess land is that how they're going to be taxed they'll be taxed as chapter land so why because they haven't notified us of changing their use they're still sitting there as vacant land um so i guess what that would mean is that maybe the board needs to decide how they want to proceed so we have an actual policy is it by the time is it the date the plan is recorded um but you i mean they haven't changed the use of their land but should it be now a uh, vacant buildable land well, it's chapter so that it would be because they all you know qualify for chapter, right? You said each parcel still has the five plus acres on it, right? Right, but the first what is it? Three acres is which should be charged as buildable lot. So the first acre, the forty uh, four thousand three hundred five hundred three forty three thousand five hundred and sixty square feet is the first acre of the prime lot. The second acre is the five thousand. And then all remaining acreage is the discounted 5,000. But if she's selling it to her children and they build a house, they can still qualify for chapter land and there's no right of first refusal and there's no penalty right. tax. Right, right. So, I'm not, yeah, I think what I'm still unclear on is, and I think Darcy's asking the same question, um, are they going to be valued as building lots and right. not not a hundred percent chapter land correct um i wasn't planning on taking them out of chapter land they haven't notified us um so it's it's really i guess 
I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, okay. if you want me to assess them, um, oh. but they, there's a lien on the property. Right. So I, I feel I can't start assessing them as a full building lot with a lien on their, I, I guess I'm a little confused as to what to do. So is she, she's dividing it up and, and giving each part to her child, whatever children. So then the deed would now be switched into the children's name. So that would be, they would have to do the chapter start, you know, as if anybody yeah. buying a lot, yeah. they would have to now be the owner of that property and apply for chapter land. So the back land could be chapter where the building lot would still be a buildable, potentially buildable lot. As far as I know, and maybe you guys know different, I haven't received any deeds yet. So as okay. far as I know, she just split the land, but owns all of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, we kind of understand her long-term intentions and I understand that the, uh, um, this is helping me clarify what my questions for the planning board are. So one of my one of my concerns with the planning board is that the way the subdivision looks to me, um, and reading our zoning bylaws, I'm not sure that those 20 acre parcels actually comply with building lot standards. So um, I want to be kind of careful and work with the planning board so that we're not taxing something that may not actually be a legal building lot, um, you know, without doing, again, some research on that. Um, and I would hate to, you know, have someone pay for, uh, say a child inherited this piece of property and um, paid taxes on this land as a little building lot and then went to come and build on it and found out they couldn't, that would not look good for the town. Um, anyways, just kind of thinking ahead a little bit. Does yeah. that make sense? Darcy, you look confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to remember the plan. I can't remember it. I, I, I don't, know why I didn't see that it wasn't buildable because I think they had enough frontage on each lot it just more was like a flag lot if I remember correctly right so but I there's... think they still had the frontage and acreage yes and there's some interpretation that I, I am looking for on our zoning bylaws about taking um one of the one of the requirements is that you cannot reduce the lot width by any more than 80% of the required frontage. Now, I, my question, and, and I don't know if, it was my understanding that that was for the entire lot. So these are very strange lots and they do narrow way, way down from what the required frontage is. So is that zoning bylaw, It does that just refer to the building envelope that is proposed within that first acre, or is that for the entire lot? That's something that need I need to I want to have clarified in my head. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I think the planning board needs to clarify that with the zoning um, mm -hmm. for future subdivisions. Didn't you have a? Didn't you guys have another similar one where somebody took it out of chapter, for or sorry, didn't take it out of chapter, but um, allocated a piece of their land for one of their kids, up on yeah. um, Cold Spring or no, sorry, Crooked Ledge. One hundred one Fomer, the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that similar? Where the you know the valuation of that is is partly buildable and partly chapter land still, or? So they pulled it out. Um, the problem is, is that it was um, chapter land, so they're going to get like a like a double whammy because there was nothing to apportion. Um, so the apportionment would be when you split your land, but you haven't yet created the parcel because we can't create it until the new year rolls around. So you have to apportion it. But this is chapter land, so it has an extremely low value. So there's really nothing to apportion their house has got to be close to complete. So once the new year rolls around, they now have a, um, 
they now have a partially, if not very close to finished house, a full value of land, which I think is just over an acre. So they're going to get a supplemental tax bill. Um, but they did everything that they, they followed the rules. They filed, um, they didn't have to pay rollback or penalty because it was for their child. Um, they did get assessed as of January 1st as a building lot, but it now they started building before the year rolled around. Right. Um, they filed the notice with us. Um, a new lien was created with their, uh, the Florks correct acreage for chapter 61 forestry. Um, so a little different because they actually had the intent to build on it for a child. Um, I, I haven't heard anything. I've just heard from you, April, what the intentions are. I've sent them the notice. They haven't sent anything back. Um, so right now it seems like it's just kind of hanging out there. There's been no intention that I, to build. They haven't notified us that they want to build. They right. want to split, and they split a large tract um, right. of land into, you know, pretty decent sized parcels. This was just a small, yeah. over an acre parcel. Um, so you know, similar, but different. Um, we're waiting. They told us everything that we had. They gave us all the information we needed. They're, the other on Crooked Ledge were kind of left wondering um, what's going on. But as of right now, they're assessed as Chapter 61B recreation. Okay. So if they don't answer because you sent them in a letter and if they don't answer, then it should be, and it qualifies as a building lot, it should be taxed as such. Um, the ownership hasn't changed, so it's all, um, yeah, I guess if that's, if that's what you want me to do. I, well, I'm just thinking, so then it's, it's not really fair if we, you know, let that go as not a building, if it's now, it's still a building lot, it's been separated out. Um, then, has it perked? Have they passed the perk test? Well, that's why it would be a potentially buildable lot. Right. By, so by them separating it out, they've now divided their property. You know, it, it'd be like me dividing a lot off right now. You know, I don't have a buildable lot, but if I divided that off, you know, I wouldn't necessarily need a perk um, to, to make it, you know, a building, a buildable lot you know, it's potentially buildable. Right. Um, once they move forward to get their building permit, then it's a buildable lot that they can put a house on. But, you know, it's just like any other lot that conforms to the building to be buildable. You know, other people are being charged for buildable lots in town right. that don't have a perk or don't have a building on it. And I just think that we you have to keep that consistency of, you know, if it's, if it's a separated out lot, whether it's the same owner or not, um, you should be paying for yeah. it as a buildable lot or potentially buildable lot. And I, I don't know, Dave, I, you, you, I, I don't know if you want to voice anything on this, what your thoughts are. I, mean, well, I agree with what you just said, Darcy. If you're going to be uh, separating a lot that has the frontage and the size to be a buildable lot on paper, the appraiser, Martha, appraises as a building lot plus excess. And then what's classified as check, Chapter 61 gets entered after that part. Yeah. So the first acre should be assessed as a building lot? You can assess or you can appraise it as a building lot. In fact, you should, right? And then uh assess it based on an acre at whatever the chapter land value would be or if it's 61 b you'd go 20 25 percent of that but if it's all included in chapter 61 then you still need to break it out and appraise it properly okay 
I see what you're saying. I was confused by what, because I thought it was chapter land, not chapter land. Yeah. I not, mean, um, and that's how I have it assessed. I have the first acre as the prime building lot. I have the second acre as the pro, the residual, and then I have all remaining acres. So that's how I have it assessed. It just happens to be under Chapter 61B. Correct. So on paper, it gets appraised at its how it should be. And then whatever is qualified as chapter gets applied to those separate um, yeah. classification categories. Yes. So that's and, um, and that's what I like about 61B, because you don't have to figure out what's hay, what's uh, back, what's, uh, you know, uh, berries and um, so how I created the parcels. That is how I created the parcels. So I'm sorry for that confusion. To me, it's like either it's taxable or it's chapter land with the discount. So they are receiving the and, and chapter 61B gets taxed higher than the other two. Right. So I have one parcel um, of 20 acres, uh, new new parcel. It's assessed at 33,100. So they, she will see a spike in her assessment as she split the parcels. So okay. Okay. does that answer the question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah I just, you know, I think okay. it should be, yeah. right. be assessed fairly um, just because she doesn't if she doesn't intend to build on it it still doesn't change the use of it it can be buildable right. yeah i i sorry for the confusion okay all yep. right good all right um do we have any other old business Um, I guess I'll bring it up now. Um, so there is a product that is, um, I believe it's making its way on Eastern Mass. And um, in the um, Hamden, Hampshire County Assessors Association, which I will add, I am an elected member. Um, Congratulations. There is a product called Near Map. Have you heard of that, Dave? I have not. No. How do you spell that, Martha? So it's N E A R M A P. Thank you. And it is kind of a game changer. It doesn't have to just be used by assessors. Um, and it's it's a pricey, and this is just the beginning um, of the inquiry about it. But what what you pay, it's under 8000 for the subscription, but what you pay for the subscription, you can make up for in new growth, in capturing um, uh, things that people do to their property that they don't hold permits for. It is a, there's a flyover and they've actually got a good portion of Southampton so they wouldn't have to fly over and do um, their our own flyover. Um, there's three different views. There's an oblique, a 3D, and you can zoom in better than you can on Mass EIS. Um, I think Esri ArcView was a pretty good, you could zoom in really well. That's a GIS system. You could zoom in really well um, with that, but um, Google Earth, not as good. Um, but you can capture and measure the accuracy is within six inches of um, what you're measuring. So you can capture outbuildings, additions, patios, um, pools, and it's pretty fascinating because as we know, people do work without pulling permits. Um, there's been lags in the office as far as who's going out getting permits um, checked. Cyclical inspections were a little behind on that. We're hoping to catch up. Um, and some communities in the time of COVID have been able to go under the CARES Act to have it covered or at least partial coverage. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. And it can be used, um, my thoughts, conservation, because they have two flyovers. They have leaf on and leaf off. So in the spring, when the water's high, you can see where the water level comes up on some of our 
rivers and streams in the fall when it's running low. So you can see where the house is, to where the buffer, to where the stream edge. Um, planning could use it, zoning can use it. So I, I want to get more information and try and get some of our departments who actually have a much smaller budget and expense budget than we have here. Um, but once I get more information, I will send it along. It's really amazing. They actually use artificial intelligence. You have multiple users within the um, town hall, so you don't have to pay per user. Um, it's really fascinating. I'm, I'm just looking at the website right now. It looks cool. It is. Uh, she ran, I had a meeting with her. And um, she ran through all that can be done. I know Taunton has it. Um, Westfield is in the process of getting approval from, uh, I don't know who, the approval from the state where that falls under. It's not something you could have previously tried to get prior to COVID. It has to fall within, you know, COVID. I asked Ed, he seems, I think he says we're kind of out of our COVID money. Um, but we have up until December 31st. Yeah. So there, Martha, there may be some COVID money that can be reprogrammed because I think one of the things we've got to do is get really good accounting and stock of what's been spent and what departments didn't end up needing all that they asked for or right. they changed their mind on something that was no longer necessary. So there could be some excess funds if this legitimately can fall under COVID. Well, that's, I mean, yeah. It, it definitely has to be COVID related. So we definitely would have to get a state approval for that and make the argument of, you know, how it could be. Um, and I guess the only thought I would have is that, you know, it might be one thing to be able to acquire something like that under COVID funds, possibly under the CARES Act. The challenge is always then what is the ongoing subscription maintenance right. cost, what an annual cost, because that's a budgetary item. And that's where I know some other departments got stopped. They wanted to order some things that you know, we might have legitimately been able to get under CARES Act, but then they, they pulled it back because there was going to be like $1,000 a year you know, running costs, which right. they didn't feel like they could really budget for. So uh, that would just be a caution on my part. And, yeah. uh, all and I know. even but. if we were only able to have the subscription for a year, that's a year's worth of data we're actually acquiring that would pay for. So every person that has put in a patio or a pool, whether they did it themselves or they hired a contractor, um, that is what we might not otherwise be able to access either by, you know, some of the driveways on yeah. Bowmer and Crooked Ledge. And um, so now we can actually see, and it's not just you're getting, um, you know, an overhead, you're able to maneuver around the property, which is kind of creepy. Marla loved it, but hated it because she was <laughs> you know, sitting in her, her house um, but we might, have to, we, have, we might have to create a drone bylaw or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure if they're drones or they're actually doing flyovers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever it is. Listen, well, guys, whatever I, it is. I'm sorry. I, I've got to go. We've got select board starting shortly. So I have to disappear. So thanks. Bye, Chris. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Bye. But I debated if I wanted to bring it up, uh, but it's just really worth. Uh, I guess looking into and maybe nothing comes from it, um, but they do have a good portion of Southampton already flown over. Um, so it, it's, um, it's kind of, it's kind of a. That's really cool awesome. stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's definitely worth looking into, especially if it's something that, you know, the cost could be shared with other departments um, or, or we could help other departments and absorb the cost um, right. so that the whole town hall could use it. it, it that makes sense, too. So Yes. Yeah. But even if it was just for a year, it'd be really greedy and just, like, get all the information I could in that one-year period. And then, I don't know, I guess wait until we start rolling in the money. Can, can you find out what the annual subscription would be to maintain it? Uh. Yeah, I have, um, these are all, because she's willing to meet with us. And then I thought, because there's certain questions, you know, I was in the um, awe phase of, um, you know, listening to her presentation, but then there's all the little, because um, I have the cost. 
um, it, it was it was under eight thousand for the annual subscription, and then it was I think another set of money if you want to open it up to the public, and then there was the AI which could because um, you have historical also, so you have whatever it is today, and I'm not sure how historical works works for them if that's if um, you're a new community. Uh, but if they already have the data, it must be just being able to access it. So you can see, you know, changes to properties. Um, um, so you can see what was there or what was not there three years ago. And then now you can see, you know, right. the same. Okay. Um, but yeah, so 8,000 was the initial cost. And that is just um, for unlimited users within the town hall. And that would be every year? Every year, but my guess is like most subscriptions, um, it goes like annual maintenance might go up. Um, and I think that the huge cost is, is flying over unflown territory. Right, okay. Yeah. I think it's worth certainly setting up a meeting um, with their sales department to see what they have to offer and what the cost is. Yeah. Right. Because um, I like uh, planning and zoning, and I know I had already spoke to Marla briefly about it. Um, right. uh, building, I would think, health. Um, I don't know the details of what every department does to be able to put a seal on to them, but if I could pass the information on and, and they can see it for themselves, it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Okay. Sorry, um, I had to change location, so. That's all right. <laughs> um, so last but not least, um, I open space is meeting uh, at the same time as PPPB this week, so um, I have nothing to report, and Chris is gone. Um, so, town bylaw change um, proposal. Have you? I sent that along to everybody. Did everybody have a chance to read those? Uh, when I read a little. Yeah. The the only thing I saw April is this one pair about members of all groups must provide up to date contact information to the town clerk. I, I mean, it seems like how many members do we have in this town? It, it, to me, it seems like you should provide it to the chair to provide to the town clerk and consolidate it is, is my only right. thought. Right. But actually, that may be just... Um, more of uh, how this is written than what the intent was. Because the next thing is that the chair's responsibility is to notify the clerk of any changes in membership. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm wondering, Janet, if that maybe just needs to be rewritten with having that as part of the chair's responsibility. Um, you know, yeah, that, that's, I mean, I just think that yeah. it would make more sense for the, um, right. to fund it through the chairs than to, right. or the clerk, whatever, whomever, but yeah. so designate somebody. Cause I mean, I, I don't know how they would manage and all that information right. and then, you know, so anyway, it's just a thought they may not agree with it, but that's, that was the only thing I noticed. Okay. And I'm going to have to, well, no, we should be done by six, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we're almost done. Um, all right. So I guess what I would recommend or request is that we all read these. And why don't you send me, besides this, um, this, you know, thought, send me any other, you know, notes or whatever that you might see you'd like to see written differently. And then I'll get everything over to Lucy. 
Okay. Sounds um, good. Do you have any questions or um, concerns or anything that you want to bring up with the board? Here. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> no, not here. Oh, okay. Sorry. That, no, it's my computer. Okay. <laughs> Getting those internet things. Okay, so um, around 1.30, we will uh, be signing things for Martha tomorrow. Yes. And um, I'll stop by the shop, Darcy, and sign the papers. Sure, and Janet, you're more than welcome to stop by if you feel comfortable stopping in. <laughs> no chop liver there. Actually, you know what? I'll just bring it at 1.30. Oh, okay. That's good. Then That yeah. makes more sense. Did Janet. Janet, you're, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry right. about that. I'm trying okay. to balance family yeah. stuff. Next meeting. Well, there was something in this all boards and committees too that said, you know, to, to notify them within, oh, are we getting back to the public within two, um, 10 days of any emails that we receive? And we don't meet every 10 days. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess that was in my only one. I, I'm not, I, and I'll, I'll send that to you, April. The only okay. other thing, and some boards only meet once a month, so that's so anyway. Okay. All right. I have on my calendar March twenty third at four thirty. That's a Tuesday. That's what I have. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you at the next meeting. You're going to make him come to every meeting before he's official? <laughs> no, you don't have to come. Um, only if you want to. I've got a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> it looks good on you. I don't think I've ever seen you smile that much. <laughs> <laughs> Retirement is good. Yeah. If you want to practice being the clerk, I'm fine with that too. Just okay. like you know, I got a lot of time, as I say. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank Some of you. And don't forget to drive by Three Friar. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.